it's Martina and Jackie from Emo Girl Talk and YouTube. And we are here with Mike Wiebe from the Riverboat Gamblers. Hello. Hi. Up, Mike? I'm How good. Are you doing? I'm great. How are you guys doing? We are very good. Just can't get out of bed. You guys played house parties a lot, right? Yeah. Back in the day. So Lots. how did you get from from the transition of a house party to an actual a gig where you got paid? Um, I mean, it's a low, slow transition. We uh, we we're still waiting to get paid to get paid. You know, uh, we we uh, <laughs> you know, there was a little club in Denton, and we would do shows there. They were mostly free shows, and then. And then maybe occasional shows out of town, and it was just a very slow transition, and it was never really our goal to, to do the band as a as a uh, full time or for a living until like years later. So yeah, you never yeah, thought that you would be like at a venue like this. I mean, the first like three four years we were a band, I didn't think that at all, and then and it didn't even really. I mean, I thought I probably thought, oh, that would have been cool, but we weren't really like. It was just kind of like let's play shows in our town, and we were all in college, and and all just kind of doing other stuff and other bands, and it wasn't. I just it always seemed way out of reach to actually be in a band for a living, to even to like tour, to have a record out. It just seemed like that's something that like rich people that are super <laughs> badass get to do, you yeah. know. And we're not that, and and it just I, I wish we would have had a little bit more mm -hmm. uh, self esteem about it and kind of chased those things sooner than we well, did. Well, hum being humble is always good, but now now you have a reason to brag. Just keep screaming out, I'm still not dead. So, um, have you ever had a really crazy fan experience, like somebody trying to pull your pants off on stage, or something weird? Because I know that happens to a lot of fans. Fadi tried to pull my pants. Fadi did pull my pants <laughs> off on stage. <laughs> He's not a fan. fan. <laughs> He's not a fan of man. We were playing a show, and uh, and we it was we had, sometimes if a show if it's very underattended, we'll call it shirts off Saturday if it's or tops off Tuesday or whatever. And we played an underattended show, and I was not wearing much, and Fadi came from my uh, underwears and yanked him down. <laughs> so speaking of weird shows, tell me about the show that you played in Bakersfield yesterday. Okay. Well, so we went out there, and it was this big amphitheater, and it was outside, and there was this weird little, like, moat in front of it. And, um, and we played, and then about halfway through the set, there was kind of a place where you, you know, stop, and they're tuning up, and I'm talking. It's, hey, thanks for coming out, everybody. And, and it's great to be here in California. And, um, you know, randomly when I'm talking, I'll occasionally drop an F-bomb or an S-bomb. <laughs> hmm. But and, it's a rock show. I yeah, know, I know. Exactly, know? exactly. And, but the thing is, I was talking, I was like, you know, I was like, I know that I, I was like, I know I'm preaching to the choir here, but um, I'm really bummed that the you know the gay marriage bill didn't pass here in California. I think mm -hmm. it's really fucked up that we still live in a place where you know people aren't allowed to like openly love who they want to love, and that you know it's just it's kind of fucking ridiculous. And so, and you know, when we went back in and played some more songs, and then right before, right afterwards, um, Ian, uh, the other guitar player, was like, "Hey, Mike, don't swear. They're gonna." And, I, and it was kind of one of those things where I heard it and I was like, oh, okay, whatever. And I actually like thought in my head, like, I wasn't like out to like make a protest mm -hmm, on yeah. the swearing thing. I was just kind of like, okay, whatever. So we were talking and something happened and Eric was just kind of goofing around and I just made a joke about our drummer and I said something about how he's such a shitty baseball player, he won't even make JV this year, which isn't, admittedly, isn't that funny of a joke, even in context, <laughs> but, um, which they should have yanked the plug on me for not being funny. But, um, <laughs> But then all of a sudden, all the all the they cut all the power, and they're like, no, no, and this radio wow. guy. They came cut up to the me. power because you said yeah. shitty. Yeah, yeah. And Wait, like, so what kind of, was the venue? What kind of venue was it, it or was what kind of crowd? It was an amphitheater venue, and it was a free show. It was a radio, a radio uh, supported thing. But I mean, it was all it was a bunch of like you know. Were there were like a lot of little kids or something. There was maybe a few out there. I mean, it's not a Hannah Montana show here. Hannah, yeah, like, we're not the Jonas <laughs> that is Brothers. So weird. And the thing is, you know, they asked us to play, <laughs> and you know. There's plenty of swear words in our lyrics and stuff like that. So I, I and they never asked us to like not. Yeah, like not not obscenity swear. or anything. Yeah, there was no. Um, I had no idea. So we, they, you know, we stopped and and then went out and met a whole bunch of cool people. Speaking of 
tours. Um, have you ever done a warp tour ever? We did. We did yeah. one in 2005, I think. 2005. Yeah. What stage? It was the Volcom stage. Nice. Yeah. So, so tell us about that experience. It was, we were in a van and um, it was really brutal because if, if you're in a bus, you can kind of sleep. But if you're in a van, it's like, <laughs> you have to be there about s between like seven and nine in the morning, roughly. Yeah. And they're pretty far drives. So you're, you're driving overnight quite quite a bit, and um, it was just, I mean, it was physically, like, really difficult loading your, load, you know, we were just on our own and just loading our equipment through these fields and setting up merch and doing all our merch, and uh, that being said, like, there were bands that had it, had it even rougher because they didn't even get a decent stage or a decent time slot, yeah. so, I mean, it's... I have, and I actually have a lot of fond memories and met a lot of cool bands, but I, it was it was very difficult. It would you ever kinda, do it again, if you had the chance? If I had the, um, I think we would do it if we we were in a position where we could be in a bus. Alrighty, well, thank you very much, Mike. We really appreciate oh, well, the interview. Oh, thank you for coming out. We enjoyed the interview. I enjoyed it. You're an awesome guy, too. and we'll see you at the show. Awesome. All right, so you want to tell everybody out there in YouTube land where they can find your music. You can find our music if you go to uh, www.theriverbuckamblers.com. There's a free single you can download and a B-side. And then there's a whole bunch of links to iTunes and I Like and um, Pure Volume and stuff like that. So where all of the music is for sale and um, and and you know let's be honest in this day and age you can probably find it and steal it from some <laughs> side if you want but, but you want but we want them to, you guys to support yeah. the band well right? and if so. you do that just make sure you come to the show and buy a <laughs> yeah. t-shirt at least listen to the songs yeah yeah buy a t-shirt <laughs> tell your friends tell your friends <laughs> buy me a drink we'll be telling our friends <laughs> awesome all right thank you so much thank you so much this was fun it was. Thank you, everybody, for watching. See you later. Bye-bye.